Yo, Ashvane is looking rough. Actually, I'm just kidding. Ashvane's a queen. Didn't mean that. Okay, so I had someone message me, and now I'm going to have to do a little bit. I've done a little bit of thinking on this so far, but most of my thinking for this idea has actually been what the layout of the raid is. So I was thinking earlier today, what is the best raid layout they've made in WoW? What I'm going to be doing is making a fantasy raid. So what that is, is I'm going to have to choose how many bosses I want, what position the bosses are in in the raid, and then pick basically the best bosses of all time. I'll kind of get into the criteria of when I'm going to pick the bosses. First of all, this is going to be my opinion. I understand a lot of people in chat will misunderstand what I'm doing. I'm not just going to pick like the hardest bosses and just put them in a row and just be like, yeah, make the raid super hard or whatever. I'm not going to make Star Augur the first boss. I, I think there's a lot of value in a Blizzard raid to having an easy first boss that's farmable for loot for people who are not really Mythic Raiders. I think one of the best things for a first boss, for example, is I think it's rekillability matters so much because I think that means it's just a really good boss. Bosses where at the end of farm, everyone in your guild isn't dreading doing the boss. Uh, and there's been some raids where that's been good or bad. And we'll kind of just go over all of the good first bosses over the last few years. And then we'll just kind of go up from there. There's a lot of things that make a really good second or third boss. We'll talk about whether mid raid walls are worth it, bad or good. We'll talk about you know, uh, what the second to last boss should look like. Should there be two kind of second to last bosses, kind of like uh, Sepulchre, right? Where like they give you the two boss choices right before the last one. Just to give you guys a little heads up of how I'm doing it, I am doing this from Cataclysm and onwards. I am not going to be including any bosses from before Wrath. Main reason why is I think most things from Firelands and onwards specifically are very re relatable. Uh, a lot of the bosses in each raid would work in a new raid. Almost everything from Wrath and before that is completely outdated. The hardest bosses back then would be an absolute joke uh, if you were to put them into the game now. And it's also just a different time. I think comparing between eras and anything is weird. And in, in, in WoW specifically, I think it really doesn't work. Mostly because a lot of people, especially in chat... Uh, do have a ton of nostalgia for when they started playing the game, and a lot of those people was from Classic to Wrath, and oftentimes biased nostalgia makes you have a little bit of weird takes. So, And not to mention, I didn't raid at a high level in Wrath, so I know of these bosses. I did some of them in Pugs. I was playing as a casual then. But how am I to give a real opinion of a boss or pick a boss or compare that to something that I played all the time. It just doesn't really make sense. So it'd be like THD making his like every two years, he does like an expansion, wow expansion tier list and he rates expansions he never played. And then even hilariously enough, the one he did at the beginning of Shadowlands had mop as like an A tier. And then the one at the end had had mop at a B tier, which again is so strange because he never even did it. So how in the course of a year has your an opinion of an expansion 10 years later changed of again? Yeah, just stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. Let's do it. So first thing we gotta figure out is what's the perfect amount of bosses in a raid? We've seen major, major differences with this. Any major raid usually doesn't have any less than eight bosses. Eight is usually the floor for how many bosses a raid will have. So I looked at not only how many bosses were in some raids. Now, I did not point out every raid. The main reason why is the, the point of this exact graph is way less because of the amount of bosses and more the layout. So the layout from this expansion that you're used to, the two most recent ones, Sepulchre and Nathria had basically the exact same layout. They had the first boss. They had a line on the left. And then... They had, on the right, they had two bosses you could go to each, and then you had to kill both to go to the one after it. So in, in Nathria, this is Shriekwing, Zymox, and Sun King, and then after that you do Council. And then in Nathria, of course, it is uh, Huntsman, Hungering Destroyer, and Inerva, culminating in Sludge Fist. And then in Nathria, it just goes, in, there's no 9 and 10 split. It's just Stone Legion Generals, and then the last boss is 10 into Nathria. But when you're looking at Sepulchre, it's the exact same thing, except instead of being Stone Legion Generals, there's just two bosses, Lords of Dread and Rygalon. Same raid layout, basically. And then Sanctum, pretty famously. Actually, I think Sanctum is one of... The, this is actually my leading candidate right now. Sanctum is my leading candidate for best raid layout, even though the raid itself was a disaster, but that was for total other reasons. I mean, the main reason the raid was a disaster was because these bosses right here were all complete jokes. <laughs> 
and the mid raid wall was too hard for most people but I, I love this because one two and three is usually pretty linear I think raids that have like the Nihilotha setup or like the second boss or even the Sepulchre Nathria setup I feel like this doesn't give your bosses enough integrity and the reason why is because when you make things like this I feel like Blizzard feels like they have to tune again four is Huntsman three is Zymox and two is Sun King they have to tune these bosses all to potentially be the second boss and I feel like it doesn't allow a proper linear difficulty scaling where like in Sanctum for example even though none of these bosses were very challenging I actually think it's better to have Terra Gru, the I the nine it is a direct linear difficulty path and I feel like at least in my opinion when you look through the history of WoW the second and third boss are pretty similar in difficulty but in a lot of cases the third is a noticeable jump from the second and it doesn't really fuck up the whole difficulty curve of the raid so I definitely considered using Sanctum as that just so I could separate bosses two and three Battle of Dazar lore if you guys remember there was no choices you could make in this entire raid it's actually kind of interesting to look at it all like this to see like where what they've done in the past Battle of Dazar lore you just actually went in a straight line you never had a single choice every single boss was like this now I think some people will not like that because they like to have that element of choice but if you think about it there really isn't a lot of choice when you kill Anduin there is no choice you're not killing Lords of Dr you're not killing Rigalon and then Lords of Dread that makes no fucking sense this could be a straight line in Sepulchre and you just do nine and ten after each other and Rigalon is after Lords of Dread it makes a hundred times more sense you're always gonna go for the easiest one now in my opinion some raids have actually done this correctly I listed Siege of Orgrimmar Siege of Orgrimmar strangely enough one of the very best raid designs ever even as simply as it is <laughs> they just straight up did 10 bosses in a row completely linearly and then 11 and 12 is siege crafter black fuse and thok both of them very difficult very different very similar difficulty right after each other absolute banger uh raid siege of orgrimmar and then it still gives you the opportunity for the true second to last boss and then it gives you the end boss and then nihilotha was its own weird thing after the first boss you have two choices and then you open up the entire huge area and you could go do shadhar drestagath and then ilganoth or you could do vexiona and raden or you or sorry you could do hive mind and then raden or vexio or uh sakrathar not sakrathar sorry zanesh and then Vexiona and then it's Carapace and then it's Nazoth in my opinion I like Nihilotha's layout I think 12 bosses is actually too many I think you actually reduce the overall quality of the raid by going over 10 I'll kind of get into that in a bit I think it's going to be too convoluted to make my list based on this I think this is uh this is out of the out of the running HFC first boss Iron Reaver then you have a choice between uh, that one boss on council after that you did kill rog and then you did Gorefiend, one of the most original mid raid walls the only thing i think is is good about hfc is the tyrant velhari zulharak thing right before 12 and 13 is so far my favorite thing here's what i'm sure of so far here's what we're gonna do for our list i want it to only have 10 bosses i think 10 is fine i think 8 is fine i think 9 is fine i think anything over 10 is extra i want there to be a last boss at 10 I want there to be a second to last boss at nine before nine similar to Siege of Orgrimmar I want the two bosses before this to both be before the second to last boss now the question is what do I want before this let's talk about mid raid walls because the number six is going to show up a lot six is where Gorfine was in Hellfire Citadel the OG mid raid wall the like three bosses after the mid raid wall were all easier than it in sanctum boss number six painsmith way harder than every boss in the raid besides the last one even though there's three bosses after it are mid raid walls good i'm going to make the take that mid raid walls are overrated as fuck and they're bad for the game i think no matter what you do for a raid the idea should be complete linear difficulty it does not make sense that you fight a boss that's so insanely hard and then as soon as it's over you kill bosses after it I think it makes guilds quit where otherwise they would continue playing because they're not able to reach bosses they could kill because of a boss they shouldn't I think almost exclusively when you are looking through a raid the number of the boss that you fight should be harder than the previous one and easier than the one after it with almost very no exceptions 
I think it's actually bad to do this. I know a lot of people are fond of it. I know like there's always this like super overconfident person in every guild who's like, you know, I love the mid raid wall. Give me that challenge right away. And it's like, yeah, but like, right. Like for example, if you were to, and again, I don't know about how this would work thematically, but if you were to make Sanctum go like this, and then instead of Painsmith, like the difficulty of Painsmith at six, but you actually had, well, Kel'Thuzad was a complete disaster. Let's just go off current Kel'Thuzad. If you had like Guardian at six and then Fate Scribe at seven and then Kel'Thuzad at eight and then Painsmith at nine and then Sylvanas at 10, it just makes more sense. Like it's just better. <laughs> I don't know. So I do think there should be a, a boss here. I'm thinking there isn't another split. I do think there should be another split before this. So this is going to look very similar to uh, Sanctum. I like the mid-raid split. Now the question is this. What is better? The 1-2-3 linear like in Sanctum or the 1-2-3 split from Nihilotha? Here's my only issue with it being split. I feel like there is a second boss and then there's a third boss. You know what I mean? And I feel like when you make multiple options, you end, instead of making Huntsman and then Hungering Destroyer, you just make two Huntsmans. Or, do we get a little funky with it? I kind of like this idea. No, this is bad. This is all bad. It's just going to be too many easy early bosses. Okay, this is what I'm sticking with, I think. We're doing the Sanctum path. I'm doing... I, I think Sanctum actually had the best raid layout ever for what I want to do. Unfortunate that Sanctum was a disaster. All right, now the fun part. Now we get to talk about actual bosses. What is the best first boss of all time? Let's go back all the way. Let's just start naming a few and just put them on a list to kind of decide between. All right, let's talk about first bosses. Let's start with Firelands. Shanux, don't need to even consider it. Imperial Vizier. Now this is the first time this is going to be kind of uh, convoluted. <laughs> Imperial Vizier was the first boss. It was also like the second hardest boss in the whole raid. And I think it would be really stupid for Blizzard or me to make my fantasy raid and have have for whatever reason a boss this hard to be at the at the beginning. So all right, Terrace of Endless Spring, Protectors of the Endless. Actually really good boss. It had like a hard mode version of it, but it was actually really fun to do. Again, I don't think the first boss should be that difficult. Throne of Thunder, Jinrock is an excellent first boss in Throne was fun to do over and over again, was punishing, but not unable to be done by casuals. Really, really good boss. And that fits my, my criteria. Kargath, super basic. Oh, there's a lot of first bosses in this raid. Probably most people did Beast Lord. Not very great. Hell, Hellfire Assault is it's widely considered the worst. I don't know if it is the worst. It's definitely like top three. Legion, Emerald Nightmare, Nathendra, no. Trial of Valor, Odin. Okay, again, super hard to compare things like Trial of Valor, you know, Crucible of Storms. Those first bosses are just a little bit different. And also, by the way, for a first boss, I don't have to actually have a first boss. I could have a second boss or a third boss be the intro boss, right? You can kind of play around with that. Not a huge Scorpion fan, even though Nighthold was excellent. Goroth was actually a good first boss. Garothi Warbreaker, good first boss. Now let's go to the last two. Champions of the Light. Uh, was Champions of the Light good or bad? I mean, the only reason that Champions of the Light is even notable at all is because of how easy it was. I mean, I think I think Champion of the Light was the first was the easiest first boss in in the last five or six years, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it actually instantly died. It's not memorable, though. It's not super cool. Uh, by the way, I think easy first boss matters. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this raid the hardest thing ever. Boss design, more than anything else, was pretty incredible in this game so far. And there's actually some bosses that were super easy that their design was so good that I might move them up in a raid a little bit. So, uh, Nihilotha, Rathion, mm, there's damage stops, Eternal Palace, Abyssal Commander Savara might be it. I think this boss was excellent. Not too challenging for a first boss, still asked a little bit more out of you. No damage stops. This was never boring to do in farm. Savara right now is way up there on the list. And let's just move on from that. We're almost back to reality. We're doing this pretty quick. That's good. You know what? Shriekwing's really good. I don't know if it's going to beat out Savara just because there's a damage stop in an intermission phase. <laughs> and I'm just going to be real. I think intermission phases are fine in this game. But on first bosses, we're just trying to like single target and kill the boss before it's over. You know what I mean? However, the reason why I'm not immediately shutting it off for that, because I think that would normally disqualify any boss. It was actually pretty fun in farm to find a way to do Shriekwing and kill it and like drop healers and tanks and kill it before the actual intermission phase. And that was fun. And then Dragonflight first boss is Aranog. Honestly, not a bad first boss, though. 
but we haven't done it yet so we'll leave it off for all the bosses that win we're actually gonna like go over their uh we're gonna go over their video well, like this is the first boss on mythic it wasn't impossibly hard to do you like solo soaked this if you needed to that guy obviously didn't and then like if you collided with other people you like created pools and like explosions and shit but like you were able to single target him the whole time sometimes you had to like you had to like dodge the barrage if you got a certain amount of stacks you had to like get rid of them oh yeah wasn't it you collided with someone of the other thing to reduce both of your stacks to zero but it did raid damage to make up for it i think it was something like that you did something like that for sure but it wasn't like insanely punishing it wasn't like you were wiping if you fucked it up i i actually think savara was fucking goaded i'm gonna just post the worst picture of her on here <laughs> <laughs> all right second bosses so second boss again should be pretty easy it could also be late in a raid but i'm looking for like good design so just bosses in recent memory that were really good second bosses i'm gonna actually go all the way back to legion i think ursoc was an awesome second boss i think you ended up killing it later in the raid but you could consider it I actually one of the better designed second bosses they've had in a while butcher Famously, the second, supposed to be the second boss of High Mall, and it was killed world first as the last boss in the raid because it was so hard that Paragon skipped it and went and killed Imperator Morgok and then killed Butcher after they killed the final boss. <laughs> Both Warlord Zanaz and Yorsage from Dragon Soul fucking slap. Not a lot of people will kind of agree with that, but very, very, very good. So they're, they're on the list. I'd have to pick one. If I were to pick one, I'd say Yorsage. Brackenspore, honestly, very good fight. Twin Ogron, very good fight. Could both be second. Blackrock Foundry, none of these bosses are really good enough early on in Blackrock Foundry. Blackrock Foundry gets a lot of respect because Operator Thogar was one of the best bosses they've ever made. And Blackhand is one of the best bosses they've ever made. But low-key, Chromog, average Iron Maidens, this concept has been done so much better before. And all this early stuff is mid as fuck, besides Hans and Franz. Let's see, we have Legion. Gu Dude, I think Trial of Valor is one of the most underrated raids ever. For what it, you can't compare Trial of Valor to a 10 boss raid because they're just made with different things in mind. But I mean, like, pound for pound, this was just one of the very best raids ever. All three of these bosses were impeccably good. Uh, Fellhounds was bad. High Command was bad. Tuma Sargeras. Demonic Inquisition was pretty average. The Nighthold, Chrononamic Anomaly, and Triliax were both extremely average fights. Old Year, Mother honestly should be up there. Mother was pretty good. I'm going to put Mother on the list for potential second bosses. Grong was also pretty good. Not going to lie. Grong also kind of fucking slapped. Mod was actually good. Yeah, Mod was really good. Mod's really fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mod's a really, really good fight. And then I forgot Ursoc from Emerald Nightmare. I think a lot of people figured that I was going to put the 9 on this list somewhere. I don't think I am. I feel like the 9 could have been an excellently made later boss in the raid because it had all of the... It had it had the parts. It had everything it needed to be great. But they nerfed it so much because it's the third boss that it ended up being a good third boss. But to me, I thought the design was so good it, it could have been better later. All right, I'm going to pick between these. Good second bosses. Uh, I'm going to eliminate Yorsage myself because I think Yorsage is good, but I'm also present to the fact that I am super... This is my list and I can do whatever I want, but I'm super nostalgic to Yorsage because it was like the first second boss I ever did raiding in a good guild. I think Grong is better than Mother. I think Ursoc is better than Mott. And I think Ursoc is better than Grong. All right. Emerald Nightmare makes its way on the fucking list. I would not have expected that. So our raid now starts with Abyssal Commander Savara into Ursoc. By the way, I'm not super, super set on Abyssal Commander Savara. I think Abyssal Commander Savara was a great first boss. And I think it's probably the best first boss. But it's definitely not as much of a slam dunk as I think a lot of these other picks will be. Moving on to the third boss in the raid. I want to put a council fight in the raid. It is the natural spot in the raid where it would go. And I think Council of Elders is one of the best fights they've ever made. It is the best council fight they've ever made. I want a council fight in my raid. So I feel like this has to be council, but I will I will do my due diligence and talk through kind of the rest of the, the fights here. Council can maybe go four or five. Oh no, I got my own picks for four and five. Is there anything in Shadowlands third boss-ish that reaches there? The nine, no. 
Castle Nathria, Sun King, no. Sepulchre, no. No, that's it. That's it's it's just better. Yep, that's that's the that's the winner. All right, now what we've chose is the fourth and fifth boss to be an option. So if you want to think of difficulty, rough difficulty to compare, you're thinking Sanctum. How you killed the nine and you could pick Remnant and Soul Render, which by the way, I wouldn't be opposed to either of these bosses being a good consideration. But yeah, that's just that this is the difficulty level you're going for. This is definitely good for another skim. Also, I feel like I'm making an alteration to my list because I know I forgot a boss that I think is one of the most interesting bosses they've ever made. It's early in the raid, and I think it's a little bit easier than four and five. And I don't want to remove Ursoc or Council from my group. I'm making an objective decision. Savara is gone. I do believe Ashara or Savara is the best first boss they've made. But I believe Ursoc would make an excellent first boss. I think Council would make an excellent third boss. But for the second boss, it's not a boss that's typically considered second. It was very simple because the overall tuning of this raid was very low. But I think it's one of the most creative bosses they've ever made. It played really well, was really fun to progress, and doesn't get the credit that it deserves. It is Opulence from Battle of Dazarlor. This fight was fucking sick. You got all these jewels. They're super fucking broken. The first part of the fight was not asked to do. You just had to dodge. And the second part of the fight was was like cool as fuck way to deal with it. I actually think Opulence is one of the few fights in Battle of Bizarre Lore that was often not given the credit it deserved because the first part of the raid was just so easy. I don't think Opulence either should be later than this because I have, I have much higher aspirations for the fights here before it starts ramping. The only option is whether I want it to be at three and then Council to be at two. I think I'm actually gonna make that play as well. I think I'm going to have Council get moved to two, and I'm going to put Opulence on three, uh, just as scuffed as it should be. Well, yes, Council was more difficult than Opulence, that is correct. Okay, so difficulty matters in this, but think about design being way more important. Okay, so four and five. I don't know if we start considering the mid-raid walls yet, the really good ones. Like, for example, if you guys really like Painsmith, I don't think Painsmith should ever be the fourth or fifth boss in a raid. Let's just let's do a full full run through. It'll be fast. Let's just talk about potential fourth and fifth bosses. Let's not talk about the middle of the raid yet. None of these. None. No Blackwing Descent. Uh, Firelands. Firelands. Another raid with extremely unique, cool, fun bosses, but they were so easy that they often were really overlooked. Let's go to Missa Pandaria. Third or fourth fights. You can talk Mogish and Vaults. Fangirls. All Spirit Kings. No. Also, these were kind of like mini raids, so kind of hard. Uh, nothing really exceptional and hard of fear. Uh, Siege of Orgrimmar, Shaw, Plight, Galakras, Malkarok, Spoils. You could move a few of these up, but no. Moving on to Wad. I don't think Hans and Franz deserves to be there. I think you could put Thogar in here. The question is, if you're going to put Thogar on this list, is he a decision point of four and five, or is he six? To me, I'm pretty set on Thogar and Ashvane being on this list, but I wonder which one should be later. I feel like Thogar would actually go before Ashvane in terms of difficulty. Okay, so let, let's let's just do the list. So things that I'm considering for bosses, bosses four, five, and six. We should probably just kind of look at them all at once and then place them. Bosses four, five, and six options. We have Ashvane, we have Thogar, we have Gorfiend. Uh, I can kind of keep going on from here. No, none of this other stuff besides Gorfiend is good enough. Gorfiend was so good. I think Gorfian might be a little bit hard to put at 4 and 5, though. And you could make a Mecha Torque argument. Mecha Torque was definitely a cool boss. Hmm, actually, let's think about Mecha Torque. This is a really, really hard decision, actually. Because Mecha Torque should not be later in the raid. This boss was killed. We killed this boss in 17 attempts. This is a total joke. I feel like if you did this boss in a pug, you would hate it. But if you did it in a guild, you would like it. I feel like it was fun as a guild. Also, this wasn't like heavy weak auras. You definitely, like... At least for, we killed this boss world first. We called out everyone's, it was all done via voice. I don't, it's definitely a perspective is different. And obviously this is my, my list, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think anything from BOD deserves, BOD is a good raid, but can probably move on from that. Um, and then Nihilotha, Zanesh, Hivemind, Shadhar, Drestagath, Ilganoth, God, Ilganoth. Talk about an absolute banger fight. There's going to be a few fights that we're going to talk about today that people will have varyingly different opinions on. 
The top three kills in the world that did this, us, Pieces, and and uh, Echo, Method at the time, we all did this the way where I think everyone will have a fond memory of the boss. You had to like micromanage all the dispels, and it was actually so difficult and so fun, but the way everyone else killed it was by never dispelling the whole fight, making it one of the worst fights ever, and super not fun. You never learned anything. You either lived or you died, and that was it. No dispel strat made this fight terrible. The actual dispel strat, I don't know if, if Echo members or Pieces members would agree. I think it was like extremely good to progress. It was one of my favorite fights we've ever done. It would definitely be later in the raid though, because it was very hard. Sanctum, Remnant of Ner'zhul, and Soul Render. Honestly, if it wasn't for recency bias, I could actually see Remnant or Soul Render making it onto this list. I actually think among all the things Sanctum did wrong, and the primary one being such an insanely hard mid-raid wall. Painsmith was great. It just shouldn't have been at the position it was in. And then the fact that the three bosses after it were a complete disaster by them. The the one, two, three, four, and five of Sanctum were fucking great. They it was actually like such an insanely good opening of a raid. And as you can tell by my my pathing choice, it also had really good pathing, I think. But we're gonna skip those for now. So now we just have to pick between four and five at least. We have Ashvane, Thogar, and Gorfiend. Dude, are Ashvane and Thogar actually just the the picks? The thing is, is like putting Gorefiend here is like kind of going against what I was saying earlier, where like a mid-raid wall doesn't really make sense. But the, the issue is, is that these bosses were a mid-raid wall in HFC, where like Fellord and Shadowlord Iskar and Sakrathar were all way easier than Gorefiend, so the mid-raid wall felt bad. But the thing is, is all the bosses after this are going to be harder than Gorefiend, so... It, the difficulty curve will still be correct. It'll just be, like, really fucking hard. I think we're, we're sending it. Yo, Ashvane is looking rough. Actually, I'm just kidding. Ashvane's a queen. Didn't mean that. Here we go. What's the other one called? Operator Thogar. Dude, let me just... I'm gonna, yeah, I should just put a train. This is the way better picture. So the, the boss I have on my list right now is Gorefiend, which was a really, really good fight. I don't know if I'm feeling it. Because there's a lot of really fucking good bosses I want to have at the end of this list. And I don't know if... If there's enough room, Gorfiend just isn't really good enough. Since we're making like a linear thing here, we're going to have a choice after. But what should boss six be? I don't think it's Gorfiend. Painsmith for six? Painsmith was quite good. Anduin? Uh, honestly, as cool as Anduin could have been. Super hype when it died. I think that boss had like a lot of problems. Like, so a couple things are true. Was it insanely hype that scott and twisted like lived for like two minutes and killed anduin and like it was fucking crazy to watch and shit like that yes but uh i don't think a boss like that should ever be able to be killed like that i think that's like super fucking stupid i think it's dumb like why can a boss that hard be killed by two tanks for two minutes like i don't know it's stupid it also i just feel like anduin was pretty bad boss design in general there's too many like binary pass fail mechanics it wasn't that hard for a coordinated guild but i just i don't know i think there's better bosses than anduin because i think six seven and eight we're gonna keep we're gonna hold off on nine as like second to last bosses let's just talk about six seven and eight for now let's just let's let's kind of just rip off some really good six seven and eights these are the meat of the raid i'll just start fucking slamming them out there's a million of them pain smith uh sludge fist I'm not, I'm not deleting that. He's Slidge Fist. Holandris? Holandris is, I think putting Holandris this early in the raid is fucking ridiculous. I think Holandris at minimum should be at nine or you're on crack. Well, because I'm thinking about putting Holandris at nine, like I think Holandris and Fallen Avatar are both greater than Rygalon. But I think Rygalon is one of the most goaded raid fights of all time. But if I'm putting potentially Sludge Fist in here, wouldn't it be kind of weird to have, like, Rygalon and Sludge Fist, two, like, single-target burn bosses that close to each other? I do believe every raid should have one single-target burn boss. I don't think it should really have two. Dude, I don't know if Sludge Fist or Rygalon is better. I don't know which... They're they're both so good. I could put some... Okay, so Star Augur, um, Siegecrafter, Black Fuse. I'm actually going to put Nihilotha, Ilganoth. Blast Furnace? No fucking... Dude, Blast Furnace is so overrated. It is so overrated. <laughs> Miss Pandaria, Motion Vaults, uh, Elagon? Actually good fight, but a little overrated because the boss looks really cool. Spirit Kings was trash. The best mid-raid boss in Throne of Thunder is Duramu. It's better than Dark Animus. Duramu's actually a pretty good boss to put here. Nighthold mid-raid bosses. I put Star Augur. I want to say quick shout to High Botanist Telarn. 
Uh, I don't think I'm going to put Botanist on the list or Lihivum or Kingaroth. But I just want to point out that bosses where you can kill bosses in a certain order, where you can kill the prototypes, different prototype choices on Lihivum and going a different order on Kingaroth, all those like build a boss type things. And hopefully this isn't too much of a spoiler, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go pretty heavy build a boss later. So I'm not going to do that earlier in the raid. I don't, I think that's actually maybe one thing I should say of like things that I want in a raid. In every raid, there should be a council fight. In every raid, there should be a single target burn guy. In every raid, there should be a build a boss. Th th those those three things. I think somewhere in the raid, there should be something like that. And build a boss is like live them. Now, why I think it's weird to put bosses like that there is that your experience with these fights is so different. The difference between doing these bosses first when no one has killed it yet versus doing it later, including even the second guild to do it, is a massive difference. We have a very fond me memory of Lihavum because we actually got to progress through, try different things, and like actually see how the boss works. No one else is going to have that impression because they never had or should have done that because all they did was they just logged in and yoinked and then killed it because that's just how WoW well works. Um, but we love the fight. Other people probably didn't. Because when you just break live them down to just do this and this and this, it kind of sucks. Six, seven, and eight that I haven't mentioned. We already mentioned Sludge Fist. That's the only one from this raid that would apply. Sanctum, Painsmith. That's the only raid from this one that applies. Sepulchre. Again, we talked about why live them wouldn't be there, but I think honorable mention. And I put Rigalon there. I don't know. Rigalon is such a weird boss too, because like, dude, people's perception of these fights changes so much based on the scenario surrounding them. Like, look at Holandris. Everyone reveres Holandris because they get they got to watch the best guilds in the world fucking beat their brain in against it for days. It was so watchable and so interesting, and it was super hype when it died. But if they never nerfed Holandris, you all would have the same level of resentment you have for Anduin as you would for Holandris. They nerfed him instantly. If they never nerfed Holandris, you guys would not have this longing affection for this fight. You would fucking curse its name. It was one. Of, it was actually surprising how fast they completely removed the boss difficulty. It was. It was like it was. Uh, Holandris lived for like three weeks before they just completely like removed all the difficulty from the fight. So just just know that when you're talking about some of these fights. Rigalon, kind of same thing. Rigalon was really only hard because of how tight the check was in week one. As soon as the check was gone and you gained double legendaries. The day after you killed Regalon, boss is a joke forever, right? Even though it was such a good design. It is my list, though. And those bosses, we did do them at that level. So that is my recollection of them. There's one I'm sure about. Siege Crafter Black Fuse. Siege Crafter Black Fuse will be put on this list at 7. Fuck, the rest of them are so hard. Dude, honestly, I feel like one of them is Ilganoth. It's just so not relatable because there's like actually 60 people who did the fight the way that we did it. And I would bet that almost all of them would put that on this list. Okay, the question is this. Rigalon or Sludge Fist has to be on this list, and I don't think it can be both of them. Because I think this raid needs a single, a hard single target burn guy, and I don't think you should do two. I think it's only one. Dude, I actually don't know which one's better, and I can't decide. I'm going to let my chat decide. I think Sludge Fist is kind of just better, but also Rigalon is super insane. The only question is, does Sludge Fist go six? Dude, I made him thick. Well, I guess it depends. You know what? Let's hold up. I guess it depends on what other thing I'm picking here. So it's Painsmith, Star Augur, Nihilotha, Ilganoth, or Duramu. I think it's Painsmith. The question, though, does Painsmith actually... Oh, did I made him so short? He's wide. Wide Painsmith. Does Painsmith go eight? Well, I mean, Sludge Fist was just harder than Painsmith. But that was also only because of tuning. Painsmith is mechanically harder. Sludge Fist was tuning harder. So Painsmith had zero tuning. It was easy as fuck. It was just mechanically hard. I think I think Sludge Fist is later. Just because I like the I like the idea of the super hard tuning fights being later in the raid because you can make them so much more difficult. Dude, that's a banger. Dude, imagine killing Painsmith and then you have Sludge Fist and Siege Crafter Black Views to pick from. Holy fuck. That is so sick. Yo, before we move on, I do need to do an honorable mention list because I'm going to feel really insane for anyone to read this and then not see the honorable mentions. Honorable mention for Cenarius. Ooh, good question. Cenarius was actually such a good fight. Cenarius has historically been so shit on just because Xavius was as much of a meme as it was. Also, 
quick shout out they actually made a mechanic called brambles that like at the time no one actually used a weak aura for and weak auras at least at the time like weak auras didn't track who it was on so you actually had to natty do it there was no debuff or anything you just had to use your eyes let's fucking go Croesus honorable mention actually true i want to get all these out of the way before i forget all right so now we have to talk about the second to last boss there are a lot of options so i'll just start listing all the bosses i think can be here we already mentioned that we are considering Holandris this late because i think having Holandris earlier earlier than this is pretty psycho fallen avatar absolutely stellar fight fallen avatar disliked by some because they disliked how hard that raid was fallen avatar is is peak boss design the first phase is so hard and for a completely different reason than the second phase the second phase you're fighting constant area denial super hard mechanics insane positioning and a crazy damage check but the thing that puts fallen avatar over the edge as such an unbelievable fight is the fact that you could actually just start the fight, get the boss's energy, let the maiden phase the boss, and you could actually instantly phase to the last phase to practice it, which was a really, really cool feature. And if you weren't able to do that, it would have taken actually so much longer to do if the only practice you ever got in the last phase was uh, by doing P1. So super insane fight. Other second to last bosses, Mana Roth, total fucking banger, super good. Agrimar, Zakul, Mithrax, Again, multiple fights that, depending on when you did them with nerfs, would alter your opinion. Both of them were insane. Damn, dude. Do I make this shit 11 bosses? I feel like there's too many good bosses. Let's just let, yeah, I'm, I'm changing this. We're doing it. There's going to be an 11th boss. So these are the ones so far that I think should be considered. I mean, honestly, these bosses are good. I just feel like, I feel like Kalandris and Fallen Avatar are just better. I think the only reason you add 11 bosses is just because you can't exclude Fallen Avatar and Kalandris. I'm putting Kalandris at 9. I'm putting Fallen Avatar at 10. As far as whether Fallen Avatar or Holandris was harder, like for example, if, if Fallen Avatar were to come out today with as the guilds as good as they are, Fallen Avatar is dying faster than Holandris did. If you were to take the guilds after the race world first started getting streamed, and you were to even send them back in time one total raid, it would still be much faster. That's how much it improved over time. So I think Holandris is actually harder than Fallen Avatar. I just feel like Fallen Avatar possesses the epicness. I feel like Holandris isn't as epic enough of a boss design to be second to last. Like, dude, have you guys seen? You guys who didn't play then. So the first part of this fight was, like, pretty insane. You had, like, stuff to dodge, stuff to soak. You had the maiden that had to be killed, and if you didn't kill her, she would, like, channel into the boss. At the same time, there's these lines that had to be soaked from players going in. If these lines touched the boss, he would gain uh, full energy and phase. Uh, at the same time, there's these spikes coming from the from the boss that if they hit you, put out these puddles and hit really fucking hard. It had this massive raid damage suck from Rupture Realities, which ended in a bunch of damage when it was over. Fucking absolute fucking banger. It was like mainly P1, but that was so hard. It just kept increasing every time. Then you finally got this boss to whatever health you could get him to before you phased. You got him as low as you could. And then you got to like the real part of the fight. You fucking get down to the second, uh, get down to the second phase, and you. This is the only space you have remaining. The boss hits hard as fuck. There's soaks. There's tornadoes. If any of these soaks hit the ground, it destroys the platform it's on. Whenever the boss does a mechanic, I think it's Rupture Realities, where he actually breaks a certain amount of the platform. So to actually learn this phase, you had to find exact positioning for tanks to figure out where he would break it, and then the things just kept happening, but you just had less room to deal with all of it. So you eventually take him over there. And now, again, you have to, like, practice this perfect positioning. You do soaks, you finish it, and then they've figured out positioning to where you can live one more Rupture Realities by taking him out to the side. And then now you just have only the one platform left. But he's still, like, pretty high. So you're at this level. Look at everyone's health. Just getting absolutely fucking destroyed, right? Like, this boss is insane. Definitely a hard goaded encounter. Yeah, natural enrages. Yeah, soft enrages. And then the 11th one. So there's a lot of honorable mentions here. I'm just, I don't feel like getting pictures for all of them. So I'm just going to, I'm literally going to take a picture of my notepad and post the ones that are honorable mentions. This is the most max way of doing this, but that's, what I just, I, I've run out of patience to go get the pictures for those. All right. So talk about good end bosses. Dan, Denathrius, Blackhand, Leishen, Jaina. Sure, Jaina's good. Let's kind of go through a little bit of them. So let's just watch a little bit. So Method... Black hand world first. 
first phase it's like the end the, the room is like becoming fucked and you have to push it before the room like comes in on you it keeps getting closer and closer and if this touches you you wipe sounds like a pure hard dps burn to do it in time the thing that loses me for a little bit on black hand is p2 i think going up to the platforms and like killing these mobs when they spawn and kiting around these machines through mines and like making sure the arrows hit the machines instead of other players in my opinion i think p2 black hand is like an average phase i think black hand suffers the same issue that sylvanas does it has a great p1 an unbelievable p3 and just kind of like an okay p2 and th that's what i think keeps black hand off the top spot so i'm showing you guys black hand because i don't think i'm gonna pick it so i'll just kind of phase down to the last phase the last phase very similar to fallen avatar very similar things uh you just have these insane soaks you have to do falling debris just to keep the platform from being fucked every time the tank gets hit it like does this circle and you eventually just lose spots in your room and it's just an area denial thing eventually near the end of the fight you only have the very middle to play with and the entire raid is just dying from pure raid damage and then you finally kill it fucking this this might be the best last phase of all time of any any boss but i think p2 drags the boss down a little bit fucking insane fight what are some of the other ones we were talking about i think Gul'dan was really really fun let's see method Gul'dan world first or no oh yeah exorcist one sorry which, by the way, if you guys haven't seen this, this has been so long. I'm going to play it again. This is one of the best raid intros ever made for a boss kill. I'm muting my music and you can listen to this. Oh, wait. Is it muted? Well, yeah, because like back then, Race to World First wasn't streamed. So like the video is like what you look forward to. The, all, this vid all the viewers you guys see on the Race to World First right now, none of them had anything to watch at all. And all they would do is just wait for the video of the first kill. Yeah, so, I don't know, Gul'dan, Gul'dan was like, I think one of the best things they ever did on this fight was on Heroic and Normal, there was a P1 of this encounter. And it was like super lore based, but it was like really did not matter for the grand scheme of things. I don't think Blizzard gives enough, gives, gets enough credit for identifying that and making the mythic phase start in the actual P2 of the fight. Uh, cough, cough, Ashara would have been a much better fight had you have done that. P1 Ashara on Mythic should have never existed. And then you like have certain people assigned to soak. It's like decently difficult. I have to kill eyes, damage swapping, uh, fire debuff. Grand scheme of things, actually not that hard of a P2. And then you now like kind of do the last phase. Like P2 is like kind of all one phase. Then you get the boss to 10% and he phases. And then you fight. Illidan. Illidan comes back and this was an interesting thing. This was like a cool mythic phase because it was different. It was very easy. It was just like something you had to learn. Also, I wonder what it would be like in 2022 with a streamed Race to World First if they ever did a hidden mythic phase that was this different like this where every guild just had to learn it naturally. Like actually this different. No, Jailer P4 is like, this was way more involved than Jailer P4. It'd be really, really interesting. Actually, Jailer P4 is actually probably the closest thing. Like, dude, can you imagine what Twitch chat would do if you were, like, getting to this part of the fight and you saw fucking Illidan slam down? Like, if this was, like, dude, I feel like that would be actually insane. You'd have, like, 100,000 viewers on your stream until the boss side if that happened. Oh. Either way, super dope. Uh, what are other options for last fights? We got Jaina. You guys know Jaina. Uh, Denathrius. We've seen Denathrius a bunch of times. It's very close. We've looked at Blackhand. I'm just going to let you all know. The, the answer to this is Lei Shen. Le, Lei Shen has always, uh, oh. huh? Lei Shen has always been my favorite boss fight. Uh, I think it is the best boss they've ever made. It is, uh, actually, strangely enough, not the end boss of that raid, technically. It is the end boss, but it wasn't the end boss. The original Ra Den was after it, which was, like, its own weird thing. It was a limited attempt, mythic only, or a heroic only, at the time thing. It, it didn't really meet up to it. Like, that raid should have absolutely ended with Lei Shen. Uh, Lei Shen is absolute perfection. Maybe the coolest part about it was it was done in the era before the Race World First was being streamed. Basically how this is, is the boss... There's a bunch of mechanics in this fight. I'm not going to describe them, but the boss uh, would go to a certain pillar in the room. And based on what pillar you brought him to, it would charge a certain ability he had. And then each ability on the fight, each of the four main abilities had a different charge level. And those abilities just over the course of the fight, the fight naturally got harder over time because you would have to have been charging certain things. And 
yeah, it was just insane because every guild did it differently. Blood Legion killed this after them, totally different strat. Every guild just found their own way to deal with it. And so you could find something specific to your guild that worked. And I, I just think that is the best idea they've ever had. Not to mention that in general, this boss was just like insanely fun to do. And then the last phase of this fight is just absolute fucking insanity. I'll let you watch it. Just to win to your advantage. Guys yeah, on the diamond, you can see. So you can... these two are like already fully charged. Those mechanics are already maxed out. And the last phase is when two of them are maxed out. Uh, you like basically have like half of the room to work with, and it's like the mechanics are fucking. Yes, Get ready for bouncing. That's the end, Roger. Perfect. Can we take this one? Two, one. Go. Now, go. Health Make sure go. you're full HP. Make sure you heal Bloody after he soaps. Can even more? Yeah, good. Positions for whip. Look at this shit, dude. No roar now, just run. Dude, if you didn't okay, kill, if you didn't kill those ball lightnings fast enough, you were turbo dead. On the other side. Okay. Use the winter advantage now. again. Come on, get pushed back and DPS as much as you can. Next specials. Two. Next personal coolants. One. Last now. Bump. Go banner. At done. post time. Static on. Position. Nice. Platy. Platy just suicide. Rest Warlocks Platy topping. Instantly. Dude, this is the most broken Warlocks like ever were. Was uh was Demo Warlocks in this raid. I don't think Warlocks have ever been stronger than they were in this raid. Although this was killed really early, Monks actually passed Warlocks in this raid. Random fact. And not many people remember this. It wasn't really taken advantage of early on. The build kind of took a while for people to figure out. But uh the the trinket rune of reorigination existed for Windwalker monks and it was so good that it made them change their mastery. Get ready, go, 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 arrest him. Roar now. Again on me. Super. Yeah, but Warlocks were I super did, I broken. I did the Roar start healing. Muffin. Hector, start healing. Don't use your train. Yeah, also shout out Nagura. Nagura was in this kill. Gwyn, you can go further back. Three, two, Blood blast. one. Two. Last thing now. Go, go. Baby, immune, go. LRD AM. Mm, yeah, let's see. Potions. I should evolve. On you. One thing is good. Positions. Fun again. Okay. Positions for whip. Pacte. Prince. Okay. Fun. What's next? Let's go rallying. Dude, you have to look at their health. So. Super heal. Super heal. Three. Two. Titan. One. Perfect. Oh, I said I can't. Oh, oh no. One is on me. Definitely. Get both up. We need to get them both up. We need to get them both up. Crap says around. One is out. Full of stun. I didn't use my rally pack to just call it. Position. One, uh, I'll do it now. Do it now. Heal. Yeah, Trinks. Moon can Trinks now. Nagura. Tenemang. Tenemang. On the next one we use it. Let's go. Tony. Use your rally right after it goes. Yeah. Now. Three. Spawned on the edge now. Two. Hellstones. One. Use everything you have on this. Go. Everything you have. Everything. everything. Go. Don't spawn the balls that I need. Watch it on me. Nice. You no, need the balls. I can't. The balls. One outside. Oh, the enemy. Out. Stand out. Stand out. I got it. Stand them. I'm stunning. Nuke the, the boss. Nuke the boss. Nuke the boss. Nuke the boss. Nuke the boss. Heal. Heal. Come on. Dude. Stay alive. Come on. 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 Dude, they're fucking freaking. I did. You know what I never realized before, bro? They start screaming at two and a half percent. Question: This is definitely happening to me. Have any of you guys been a part of a guild that started nerd screaming at two and a half percent and then wiped because no one could communicate? There's no way we can wipe. Oh! Yeah, dude, that feeling is very bad. It happened on uh, Archimond. It happened on Archimond. It was our first raid, like, raiding in the guild limit. Yeah, anyway, so I think this is the greatest end boss I've ever made. Shout out to Lei Shen. It seems like a boss that they're making in, in Dragonflight kind of has some Lei Shen elements to it. The first one in a long time. Uh, Kurog Grim Totem. There's basically, like, four altars, similar to, like, the four platforms on Lei Shen, and each time you're there, the boss has different mechanics and is has ramping AoE damage. It's very different than Lei Shen, and it's a very dumbed-down version of it because they put it, like, 
it's not the second to last boss or the last boss, but similar type thinking for boss design. Uh, anyways, that's it. That is the end of the list. So first boss is Ursoc from Emerald Nightmare. Second boss is High Council from Throne of Thunder. Uh, third boss is Opulence. Fourth and fifth optional bosses to do. You can do them in any order. Ashvane and Thogar, followed by Painsmith, followed by Sludgefist and Seedcrafter Blackviews, followed by Halandris, followed by Fallen Avatar, followed by Lei Shin. That would be my my best possible raid I could make. I'm going to keep Lei Shin big, too. Not that big, but... Oh, he's wide as fuck. That's fine. There he is.